everybody. This is Diane Dobry and the Dying to Know podcast for the Connection series. We have our fourth person talking with us today, Kelly, and she has a few stories that all connect. And Kelly, welcome to Connections. And why don't you introduce yourself and start giving us some of your stories? Okay. Well, thank you, Diane, for asking me to do this. I love sharing these stories and my experiences. I'll, I'll just jump in and, and tell, start out it, and, and we'll go from there. So this first story starts in around 2012. My husband, Randy, and I had some livestock and we met a couple who sold hay and we hit it off, really. There was about a 10-year age gap with them being older never really seemed to make much difference. Um, It was kind of like a brother sister type of relationship. We didn't do things social, but we together, but we did had this connection and their names were Dorothy and Gordy. Gordy, they're both um, Vermont uh, retired dairy farmers still on the same farm that they had farmed and Dorothy's family before her had farmed. And so they're, you know, good old time Vermonters. Gordy had a crusty exterior, um, a little opinionated, but very soft on the inside and very caring. And then once you knew he liked you, you were generally pretty happy about that. So as we got to kind of know each other, there came a time that um, my husband and I were down one vehicle. So I was stuck at home. And when they heard this, they had a Pathfinder car that they gave to us, which was really amazing. We hadn't even known them a year. And in the car, there is a point to this. So that's why I want to mention that they actually gave us this Pathfinder. So this was in 2012. In the spring of 2013, Gordy passed away suddenly while grading his driveway. Totally out of the blue. Dorothy is convinced that his soul never left the farm. He was brought to the hospital and later um, was pronounced dead there. But she she said she knew that he had never left and they'd been together forever. So one of the things that I'm going to jump back, one of the things we went at one point when Gordy was still alive, we went to get some hay from them and we were borrowing their truck. And at this point, Gordy had been very clear that he thought radios were unnecessary in vehicles. He didn't think people should be listening to radios. So when we were bringing the truck back empty after unloading our hay, um, my husband Randy and I joked about cranking the radio up really loud so that when he got in and started it, it would jolt him. And just, he really liked to tease. And so it would be like a teasing thing, but we decided not to do that. You know, we, we weren't gonna do it. We never said it to anybody. So he passed away on a Wednesday at the end of May in 2013. And the following Saturday, we were getting ready to go to the, to the dump and the back of the pathfinder was open and my husband was loading things in and I got into the driver's seat and I started the vehicle up and the radio was blaring. It was really (laughs) loud. So I, I kind of thought, did Randy put a tape in? And then I realized, well, that wouldn't even make any difference. So I'm looking back at Randy loading this vehicle and I'm turning the knob and it's not doing anything. It, the radio is still really loud and I'm confused at this point. And during this time, Randy gets into the car next, it gets into the passenger seat and I'm fiddling with the knob and finally I just shut it off. And so it all goes quiet. And I, he was like, what was that? And I had no idea. So I push the button again, turn the radio on. The volume is normal. The knob worked just fine. And even telling you this now, I get goosebumps. Randy and I looked at each other and we were like, oh my God, that was Gordy. That had to be Gordy. Like it never did it again. And it had never done it before. And one of the interesting things was when the radio came back on and I could adjust the dial, the, the volume, The song that was playing, I can't remember the title and I've never heard it again, but it was something along the lines of how our souls live on. And we were just, it was just such a 
treat. I mean, it was such a gift to know that he had, you know, reached out in that way. And so, but Gordy wasn't done. During the first year after Gordy's passing, I met a dog named Lucy, who's an Akbosh, which is a livestock guarding breed. And she was being kept locked in a barn stall by her owner. And um, I fell in love with this dog and I walk her and we, you know, I, I really bonded with her. And I was hoping at some point to be able to get the, get the owner to give the dog to us, to give Lucy to us. And I used to joke about having an I Love Lucy fundraiser to see if we could buy her. And, you know, eventually they did offer us the dog to buy. And when Lucy finally came home, this was a year later, she came home on the 1st of July of, night, of 2014. Um, I'm going to jump ahead just a little bit on that date is very significant for me as it was my heart horse dude's birthday was the 1st of July. On, the, on that particular one of 2014, he was turning 32 and I had been with him and he had been with me for 26 of those years. That's the exact day that Lucy came home to us after a year of waiting. And it was also dude's final birthday with us as we lost him that October. I really believe that the universe sent Lucy to help me through that time. So we settled in with Lucy. In January of 2015, I did a reading with a medium by phone and um, we had never met. And we had a, a nice reading. And at the very end, she asked if I had, if there was somebody that I hadn't heard from and that I was hoping to. And so I mentioned Gordy and I didn't say much about him. I just said, you know, friend Gordy. And she said, I have something, someone coming through and boy, is he a character. <laughs> then, <laughs> and he really was. Um, then he said, she said that he was showing her pictures of lima beans and I was I had no idea I was you know we were friendly but like I said we had never gone out to dinner together or had dinner together or anything like that and so she said ask his wife and I so I wrote all this down and she said he also mentions a ring and again I wasn't sure ask his wife she said and then she tells me that he's showing her the I love Lucy show I later found out that Gordy disliked the I Love Lucy show. So I found it interesting that he used this. But she said that he was pointing out the age difference between the two couples in the show and how it never made a difference in their friendship, just like us, the four of us. He then showed her chicks hatching, you know, like in a like under a lamp, a garden or land with rows of vegetables, the mailing or dropping off of something and some colored felt hats. She finished this all with Ask His Wife. So once I got off the phone with her, I got right on the phone and I called Dorothy and I got her voicemail and I mentioned a couple of these things and she returned my call like immediately. And it turns out that lima beans were his favorite vegetable, but being a good old Vermont boy, they're a little odd. You don't know, hear a lot of people say that they love lima beans. And but Dorothy always kept a frozen bag of them in the freezer. She also, when we talked about the the ring, she said that she, you know, she has rheumatoid arthritis in her hands and she had to have her wedding ring cut off. And a few years back, Gordy had surprised her by having it resized and repaired a few years before. And so I didn't know any of this, but so he was showing it to say, you know, like, this is me. The chicks hatching, when Gordy passed away, their, his son, Dorothy's stepson, moved into the farmhouse with Dor Dorothy's elderly father. And along with him came his girlfriend and her son. And her son started a hatchery and started hatching chicks at the farmhouse. And they also planted a garden with rows of vegetables and that hadn't been planted in, I think Dorothy said like 20 years that they hadn't had a garden there and nobody had ever hatched chicks there either. So that was pretty amazing. 
when we talked about the mailing of something, my reading was on a Tuesday and she said the previous Friday, she had finished her will and she had brought it out to the mailbox. She lives in a very rural area and she brought it out to put it in the mailbox for the mail person to pick up. And that's the only thing that we can think of is that he was aware of that and letting her know that. The felt hats, the colored felt hats, she chuckled at this and said, in their early years, they had done some maple sugaring. And at one point they had run out of the filters for it. And so they improvised and they grabbed some felt hats that they had, the hats were colored. And if you haven't already guessed it, the color went into this syrup. And so it was always a big joke with them. And so that had come through and, you know, and with the, I love Lucy, using that to show the age difference. And when I asked her about it, she said, oh, he hated that show. And, you know, like I said, he was very opinionated. So we thought that that was um, pretty amazing. So my next story, I'm the youngest of four children and always been kind of the different one, um, the one that is into livestock, into this type of, you know, the afterlife and, and interesting things that happen to us. And um, many years ago, when we purchased Dude by Morgan Gelding that I spoke of earlier, my parents loved him. He was the first horse in the family, the first livestock of any sort. And my mother always joked that she always wanted a grandchild with big brown eyes. We're all blue eyed, so that wasn't going to happen. But they really, they took to Dude immensely. And, and he to them. My dad we spent a lot of time with dad the last seven years of his life. He died in the beginning of the pandemic in May of 2020. After he passed, I kept wondering if he and my mother, because my mom had been gone to about 17 years at that point, if they had connected with dude, if they knew of each other. And, you know, I never said it out loud, but I, I wondered it. And my dad, my dad was a very gifted jazz musician. And we have um, occasionally when he would play out and do his gigs, we would go and we would go to listen and we would have these friends of ours that would join us, Sam and Kathy. Sam is a musician also. My husband is a musician as well. If we couldn't stay to the end of the show, Sam would stay and he would carry my dad's equipment for him because um, my dad continued to play out until he was 90. and. Wow. Yeah, that was pretty amazing. And then uh, I guess dad had offered Sam some some uh, guitar lessons and which Sam took him up on. So they, they knew each other. So when um, dad passed away at the end of May and during the pandemic, um, like everyone else, we weren't able to get together with our friends that much. But come midsummer, they were staying at a campground nearby. So we made the the trek over there we were all going to be sitting outside and everything and they had their chairs all set up they'd been there for about a day and a half they had the chairs all set up around the fire pit and we hung out you know and and visited and we talked about dad and I happened to notice across the fire there was um a chair and it had a, a bottle opener attached to the leg and the bottle opener was shaped like a guitar which was my dad's instrument and Sam's and my husband Randy's instrument. And I just noticed it, no big deal, it was no nothing. So we continued to visit. As we were getting ready to leave, it had gotten dark and we had flashlights. As we were getting ready to leave and, and all of us moving around and gathering things, I hear something like a ting or something like that that pulls my attention. And I swing my flashlight around and it catches the guitar bottle opener. And I don't think anything of it, but then I see something and I walk closer and I bend down and in the sand that is been trampled and you know, right around the fire pit, I bend down and there's a tiny toy horse that is the exact color that dude was. This mm -hmm. little tiny thing will stand on a quarter. That's how the size of it. The little legs are really thin. There's not a scratch on it. The legs are fine. And I bend down and I pick it up and everybody's kind of, you know, the other three are watching me and I turn around and I hold it up and all of us were, were like, 
oh my goodness, you know, like we could not believe it. It was so stark that this little toy was just right underneath that bottle opener. And when I got home, I obviously I kept it and I got home, I had this one photo of dude that is my favorite. It's during his prime, he's gorgeous. And that little toy horse is almost in the exact same position as in that photo. And so I know that they are together and that, that just really warms my heart. You know, I know they're together. I, you know, I don't have any doubt. Mm -hmm. That's great. I really appreciate you telling the story. Do you have anything else that you wanted to say? And I will put the photos. You sent photos of the, the toy that you found standing on a quarter and a photo of dude and, and you and your father, you and your husband and your father. So I'll put those at the end of the podcast. So yeah, see what you were talking about. I really appreciate you taking the time to tell us those stories. If, if yes, and I, I appreciate the opportunity to tell them there's just so many different things that I've, I've had happen in the past and, and things that have come through. It just makes me and my husband, Randy, feel comforted knowing that they're there and they're aware and they show up in the time on the clock, you know, for their birthdays and different things. And so thank you for allowing me to this opportunity to share those, those stories and for people that have an interest. Yeah, thank you so much because I, I really started doing this because I think it's important for, for people to hear. Um, sometimes it, it confirms their own experience or it, it helps them get through some grief that you know other people are hearing from loved ones who've passed. So I appreciate you sharing yours. Oh, absolutely. And Dorothy, you know, Gordy's um, widow, she feels the same way. I mean, she it just warms her heart and she notices different things that happen and we share that still. So we're still friends also. Great. That's really nice. Hmm. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. Hopefully if you have any other stories, you'll get in touch and we'll do another chapter with you. Absolutely. Thank you again, Diane. Okay. Take care. You too.